everyone. Um, for those of you who were not here yesterday, my name is Emily Broadlieb, and I teach here at Harvard Law School and direct our food law and policy clinic. Um, so we're, we're thrilled that there's so many people here. Yesterday went really well, it was amazing, and it seems like there's great energy again today. So thank you. Um, I'm going to introduce, actually, we're going to have a little bit of a change of plans for today. We have um, some bad news, which is that Ricardo Salvador was unable to be with us at the very last minute, and he sends his regrets. He's very sad to, to not be able to join us. Uh, but we have a treat, which is a video we're going to watch that Olivier de Schutter, the former special rapporteur on the right to food, prepared especially for us. And it's about this uh, very similar topic to what Ricardo would have talked about, about this proposal that we really need a national food policy here in the US. So we're going to have this great treat from him um, telling us a little bit, just a snapshot of what we would have heard. And then the other good news is, um, in response to a lot of requests yesterday for how could we be you know, being more active and engaged, how can we take all the great things we're learning about here and really come up with solutions and, and steps going forward. So what we're going to do once this video ends is we're going to break out into groups and do some really active work together on three different important and timely topics. Um, and I believe they're on that, that poster there. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you'll see the rooms there, but I'll tell you a little bit about what each of them is going to include. Um, the first one is Food Policy 101. And this is going to be a short presentation that goes through um, a few different topics in food policy and gives us a common language. And then in groups, we're going to come up with what are the top issues uh, in different stages of the food system where we really want to see policy change. So we're going to give you some tools. We're going to have you getting active in groups. It's going to be focused on state and local policy change. So hopefully things you can take back from today and do in your own communities. So that's going to be one. Um, one of them is going to be on right to food. And this is a great way to both follow up on Molly Anderson and Francis Moore LaPay's speech yesterday about the right to food and start a, in a group, start thinking about what are the things we'd want to include if we recognize a right to food here in the US. It's going to be more at the national level. So also, we'll be picking up on some of the threads that we'll hear from Olivier de Schutter's video right now. Um, and then the third panel is going to be about the child nutrition reauthorization. And this is really important and timely. This is the legislation that is reauthorized every five years and includes a bunch of different food assistance programs. But one of the really key parts of it is the school lunch program. And this is going to be reauthorized this year um, by September 2015. So that session is going to start with a little presentation about what's included in child nutrition reauthorization, what are some of the big debates coming up, and get into groups and figure out what are some things that messages we would want to give to Congress as they're deciding this, and hopefully actually come up with a letter or a memo or, or letters that each of you can then send uh, about why we think school lunch and, and the way that we feed and provide nutrition to our children is so important. Um, so each of them is going to be really active, really engaged. We're either going to give you some new topics and new tools to work on, or we'll be picking up on some of the threads you've heard throughout the conference. So we're very excited to be able to do that. Um, and without further ado, we'll start this video, and then we'll kind of come up again and just direct everyone to head down to those rooms for workshops. Anything else? OK, all right, thank you. My name is Olivier de Schutter. I was, uh, between 2008 and 2014, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, now a member of the UN Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and the co-chair of the International Panel of Experts on Sustainable Food Systems that uh, tries to provide uh, governments with uh, reports, recommendations, in order to promote reform of food systems for greater sustainability. It is with great pleasure that I learned about the uh, convening at Harvard Law School of a conference on Just Food, uh, this initiative being taken by the, the Harvard Law School Food Law Society and the Food Literacy Project. I think it is a very important uh, moment and a very timely um, initiative for, for two reasons, which I would like to briefly um, make explicit. First, um, I believe, uh, many of us believe, in fact, that time has come for the United States to adopt a food policy worthy of the name. What we have for the moment is a set of different policies that are not coordinated with one another, that actually are um, the re leading to inconsistencies across different policy areas, um, choices being made 
in the field of agriculture um, um, not corresponding to um, the imperative um, policies having to be adopted in other sectors which agriculture influences. We have agricultural policies, we have health policies, we have education policies, we have employment policies, we have environment pol environmental policies, but all of these policies remain um, uh, discussed, designed, implemented in isolation with one another and they sometimes work actively against one another. For example, the agronomic choices that are stimulated and encouraged by the particular agricultural policies that um, we've adopted are destroying the environment, um, polluting soil and water, reducing uh, biodiversity, um, uh, leading to robbing the uh, soils from the nutrients and uh, thus uh, uh, creating an ever greater dependency of soils on the addition of chemical fertilizers and all these environmental consequences have not been integrated into the shaping of agricultural policies. We have agri agricultural policies that are actually um, actively destroying employment in the name of increasing labor productivity in agriculture, not allowing small production units, uh, family farms, to survive in the, um, in the current context, uh, let alone to prosper and to contribute to rural development. We have agricultural policies that are resulting in diets uh, for the US population. That is actually the source of ill health, diets that lead to um, the spread of type 2 diabetes, of cancers, of heart diseases, all linked to the reliance on heavily processed foods that the food processing industry uh, provides uh, the, the US public with, thanks to um, the um, ability they have to use um, the raw materials produced by farmers as a convenient input um, for the processed foods that they propose. So all these policies are actually not aligned with one another and this leads to inconsistencies, to the lack of any, any synergies between these policy areas and it is um, the reason why we need a very strong um, reform in this regard for greater consistency. Um, a food policy is also um, important because it is in a way easier to change the system um, not piece by piece but by um, really changing from one model or moving from one model to another. Uh, the food system, the mainstream food system we have inherited from, from the 20th century, is one in which the different components, the different elements have co-evolved with one another. They have developed um, together um, and as a result they reinforce each other making it very difficult to displace the system which is resistant to change, which is very difficult to reform um, piece by piece and that we may need um, to re-examine more fundamentally to move towards a food system that delivers health, well-being rather than just cheap calories, as it does in the low-cost food economy that we have developed. A second reason why I think this Just Food conference is extremely timely and important is that it is an opportunity to create real food democracy. And indeed, the conversation on a national US food policy, which I hope shall be provoked by this conference, um, is an opportunity for food democracy to be strengthened or indeed to be um, invented. For the moment, we do have many attempts at local level to create food democracy. We have food policy councils that have developed in many counties, in many states, in many cities of the United States. We have a large number of um, school boards that are now um, um, uh, thinking about more responsible purchasing practices, uh, thinking about sourcing their food locally for um, school lunch programs and uh, sourcing this from farmers practicing sustainable agriculture, agroecological agriculture. Um, we have many initiatives uh, uh, by which citizens um, express their desire, um, their ambition to reown the food systems and to be less dependent on um, the food systems that are imposed on them. However, 
these attempts, however important they are at the local level, will not bring about society-wide transformations unless accompanied by more structural reform at the national level. Reform, um, for example, in the type of investment that is made in infrastructure, reform in the type of support that is given to farmers, the subsidies and the taxes that are imposed on farmers, reform in the type of um, agronomic choices that are um, uh, imposed on them, reform in the, in the, in the way um, food is or is not integrating the social and environmental costs it imposes on the collectivity. So we need food democracy not just at the local level, we need food democracy at the national level and the food policy for the US is one opportunity to create such a food democracy. One hope I have is that in fact in the shaping of this food policy for the US there will be a time for examining the large number of social innovations that have taken place in the food systems in recent years, vegetable gardens, urban agriculture, short food chains, community supported agriculture, many other social innovations have um, developed in this area and we need to learn from the successes as well as from the failures in order to allow these most successful, most promising experiments to be scaled up or scaled out from place to place, encouraged um, in their larger and um, more rapid diffusion in order to win the race against time that has now been engaged um, um, uh, with um, the need to um, uh, slow down the destruction of the ecosystems and the damage caused to our health by ill-conceived food systems uh, inherited from the past. So the food policy uh, conversation is one that will be able to build on these local experiments to learn from them to accelerate collective learning and to allow the most successful uh, such experiments to prosper and to develop further. That is the only way in my view by establishing this food democracy um, by which we can circumvent the political lock-ins that today exist in the system in which some major actors, some vested interests block any attempt at reform because they have so much to lose from uh, us departing from the routines that we have um, um, adopted and that uh, to a large extent are still guiding, uh, still guiding our policies today. So these are my hopes for the Just Food Conference. Um, at the conference I, I trust that um, many groups that have not been working together in the past will be um, having an opportunity to meet and to identify commonalities across them, people working um, on food justice, people working on food sovereignty, people working on transitions uh, initiatives and trying to uh, change things at the local level. All these groups have much in common uh, and could uh, join forces, form alliances in order to bring about a large-scale transformation of the food system in the US. And I uh, very much hope that uh, uh, this will be a defining moment in the shaping of the food movement in the US for such alternative to emerge and for um, the pressure to be built on the political system to deliver better results. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I think that that's a really nice setup for going into these workshop spaces now, and I hope that everyone will bring um, your own background and experience and the things that you've learned and get a chance to really interact with each other and come up with some concrete and real solutions and ideas. Um, so I encourage everyone to attend these different workshops and we're really lucky that we do have such a wide variety of people here um, from academics to practitioners and we hope that we will have a nice mix of folks who can add their voices to um, each of these discussions and also talk about the folks who aren't in the room, aren't able to be here, and the ways that we can include them in these conversations moving forward. So I encourage you all to head downstairs now. And um, again, if you, if you can't see this, um, in, in 1010 is going to be the Food Policy 101. 1015 is, which one? The right to food. <laughs> and then 1019 is the Child Nutrition Reauthorization.